Yeah, um, I have a question. Um, yeah, man, go for it. Can you give a, an example or a description of how a brief for a character would look like um, in a studio? Uh, sure. So, so it all depends on who you plan to work for. Um, so briefs can look like any sorts of type of thing. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. Meaning that like, sometimes people are just like, Hey, just draw a thing, <laughs> you know? And it's just like really bare bones. There's like nothing to it, you know, like draw an orc warrior with a thingy that has a thingy, you know? And you just got to go with that. Um, and then other descriptions are like super heavy, like 10 pages, like hundreds of references, you know? And so uh, in, in either extreme, I usually try to, to have my clients uh, provide me um, reference that I can actually digest, you know? So if I feel like there's a lot, then I tell them, can you just give me like a one page or like a one paragraph description of what you want and uh, how you want it, you know? And then uh, some, so a few reference images. And that works really well with me and that usually works really well with my clients. The more words that they put and the more descriptions that they put, the more confused I can get, you know? Uh, and they might not even know that they're confusing their own concepts, you know? So I, what I've learned is that character briefs are great, but like what's more important is clarity, like knowing, like both parties knowing where they're going to, to be. Does it make sense? And so the best way to handle that is like I just said, like ask, just straight up ask. But yeah, you'll you'll get all sorts of things. So there's no real like good answer to that. That's what I'm trying to get at, you know? Um, um like I, I suppose that most of your clients are <coughs> um producers or game directors or like um um I'm, I'm just thinking that an art director would uh, approach a brief differently than somebody who doesn't do concept art. Yeah. See, so, so you already, made a, a good you already made a good assumption of kind of how it is. So, yeah. so would, would an art director come up with um, a lot of the references and ask you to uh, work with that? Um, or uh, they give you a little bit of uh, leeway and, and uh, that's what I'm trying yeah. to tell you. Like it all depends. Because even, even if it's the art director, they might only give you a sentence. And even if it's the art director, they may give you a seven-page essay. It, it, it all depends, right? You might, like, you'll have cases where you'll have a producer give you, like, a really easy-to-read kind of document that you can go from, right? And then you, you will have a producer who gives you a very difficult document to read from. You understand? It, it, it's never, there's not like a, there's nothing that you can prepare for entirely. Okay. Like you're, you're even like, there's even some cases where you, you probably won't expect at all. Like no one would have ever prepared you for. Okay. So, so the best way to prepare, like I said, is actually on the opposite end, which is you should be able to communicate to them that you don't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Like remember that creepy, um, Example I gave earlier? Like, do you remember that example I talked yeah, about? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, like that was like, that was like a major studio, okay? Like a huge studio that makes billions of dollars a year. And the guy in charge, like his feedback to me was make it more creepy, okay? You would think that they would have it more, you would think they would have their shit together, but they didn't, you know? And so that's, that's important to understand, okay? And so don't ever assume, just always, like, just always be professional about, Hey, asking for more feedback. That's all. Right. And the best way to do that, I usually ask for people to send me, um, an example. That's not unreasonable. Right. Send me an example of what you mean by these adjectives that you used consistently and constantly. Cause I, I tried what I thought you meant, but it just didn't work out. Right. Um, and because if they give you hundreds of different references, like you'll have the opposite problem. Like you'd be like, where the hell is their mind at? You know, cause you in one, in one reference, you'll see like beautiful flowers. And then another reference you'll see like dinosaurs and they want you to do a space Marine. Like, how do you work with that? <laughs> you know, 
And so like, because they, they might just be as floaty as you are when you're collecting reference. Do you understand me? And so don't just presume that just because they're a, a big studio or even a small studio or a studio at all, that they know what they're talking about in terms of giving you feedback and vice versa. You know, don't assume that they don't know what they're talking about either. Okay. Like on the opposite side. And so the best way to prepare, I think, is to be able to communicate back and forth effectively. That's probably the best way to, to then that way you can handle most and if not all circumstances. Right? I've worked for clients where it was really bad. Like it didn't end well because the communication was so bad, you know, and I did not see that coming. Like I got hired to do environments, for instance, on one client, right? Um, and I'm not an environment guy, but they wanted me to do environments. And so I figured that this was going to be a disaster, but I killed it. They loved all my environments, you know, uh, but I have no environments in my, my reference or in my portfolio, but yet they wanted me to do it. They had faith in my ability to, to do environments and sure enough, I did okay. Right. And then, and then they was like, Hey, do you mind doing some characters too? And I said, yeah, you know, I can try. Right. And I felt a lot more confident with that. I was like, well, this is my thing, you know, so let's, let's get to, let's get to, let's get to moving. Right. And then when I started doing that, they hated everything. And every time I tried to like figure it out, and this is before I figured I, I learned to like ask them to be more clear, to give me more uh, ideal reference to work from, because I just didn't do that, you know? And it just didn't work out. And they, 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 I started getting a little bit uninspired by the project. They started getting impatient with my um, work, you know? And it didn't, it didn't end well. And so, and that was a situation where they'd actually had like a lot of words and a lot of descriptions, but it just, it, they're, they're, it's like my least, it's my least favorite client type to work with. Right, which is an indecisive, picky person. That they're that everything that you do, um, they're just not sure about the quality of it. Like they don't sure if that's what they want, but they always they they presume they know exactly what they want. And every time you think you give it to them, they, they, it's like if you reveal to them kind of like their original thoughts of what they wanted, and you reveal to them that it's not any good. Not that you're intentionally doing that. You're just showing them what they literally asked you to do, you know? Um, but they, they see it and they, it's no good. They kind of put it on you versus on, the, on their bad direction, you know? So that happened. And there's other times where, like, they say, hey, draw this thing. Like, there's no description at all. And I just killed it. Everything, everything I did, just everything I turned in, they loved, right? It was, like, never an instance where I was, I flopped. Maybe, like, one or two missteps, but most most things are amazing right and there are situations where they gave me a lot of information and um a, a lot of ideas and i also was very successful you know so you just got to prepare to be a good communicator is probably the most valuable advice i can give you okay because you're going to get all sorts of all, all sorts of things okay does it make sense yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, but you can expect like all sorts of things, like really, like all sorts of, you can expect all sorts of um, like direction. It's going to happen because, you know, people are different. People have different ways of explaining things, you know? Uh, probably my favorite, all right, probably my favorite uh, direction I've ever gotten was from my um, art director at Blizzard. He, he basically, he basically was like, he would, he would give me direction. It was very poignant, right? It was very clear. And then on top of that, he would then tell me, you know, I think it's important that you understand. Um, I think it's important that you understand that this is like what I'm looking for. And he would show me an image. And I think that's when I started learning that having images were more valuable, right? And then he would show it to me and then I would have a much clearer, uh, I would have a much clearer direction, you know? And then on top of that, he would also ask me my opinion. And that was really nice. Um, in some circumstances, if not all, 
you know your opinion might not be valued like they might not indir- they might not directly do that it might be indirect right but that's fine that's like your job this is just draw stuff right and so when uh, i would have him ask me my ask me for my own opinion i would give it and then he would say you know that's not a bad idea and then so he would actually reconstruct his criticism to kind of have in mind what i just said you know and uh, i thought that was great and it was, it was really valuable i learned a lot from that guy and we ended up making a really cool project together and we did the starcraft cinematic it was great it turned out great so do you understand yeah it, it's just that it's like it, it's hard to um to get exactly how um uh how the work with a our director would, would look like um it's it's something that we we never well i've never heard anybody talk about it so it's very hard to explain um because um, there's um there's i have um there's a studio near uh, near where i live uh, volta uh-huh. um and they have like i think they have like at least five art director um uh-huh. but they don't have all the the same job. Like they have a studio art director um, and then they have, you know, a lot of different art directors. So you might have like two or three art director on, on one, one splash image, which is, is, it's really weird to, to, to get, to understand how, how you need so many art director on one thing. And I have only one concept artist. Yeah. Case in point. It's not a question, but it's just, it's hard to, to understand it. Yeah, so I just gave you a case in point. I mean, you gave me, you've proved my case, <laughs> right? Like that's like, I told you, that there's, you cannot prepare for something like that. Like, I've never experienced that. Hmm. So it would be misleading for me if I were to say, well, it's like this, right? Because that's anecdotal. That's based off of like only my personal experiences. Uh, I'm a little wiser than that. I understand, like the fact that I've had such varied experiences made me suspect that I'm sure there's varied instances. So I need to focus on a, a tactic that will allow me to be prepared for most occasions. Does that make sense? Versus like catering specifically to one obscure way of art directing, you know? That's not realistic and that's not uh, practical. Because let's say you trained yourself to like be able to be art directed by five different people. Right, and then you go apply this company, and they only have no art directors. <laughs> okay, so what do you do then? You know, and so, and that exists. That there, there are companies that have like no quote unquote art directors, just the artists. You understand me? So then, how do you art direct yourself? You know, and so it, it's best to prepare yourself for the overall reality of what the job might be versus just like pandering to very specific uh occasions yeah i think you understand that do you get that yeah it makes sense yeah and so um a good way to just kind of overall have good sensibilities about being a good concept artist is to i I would highly recommend you just always uh practice painting many iterations Okay, because that is almost universally true for most cases. You're going to be asked to draw the same thing over and over and over again, almost, almost always. Okay, well, you're going to be asked to move this around there and that around this. So, you, getting used to painting the same boring painting that you painted a month ago is a is a valuable skill to have. Okay because it'll probably happen to you very often, regardless of the art directing circumstances and how people art direct you, right? Um, iterations is just like a as part of the deal. All right, that makes sense to you? Is that helpful? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. That's a good question too, by the way. Yeah, be a good communicator, that's more, um, that's more valued than, um, uh, like I said, that's like that's that's way more valued than just becoming a really good painter. Like being able, like that's our job is to communicate ideas across people who will never talk to us. So if we can't even communicate to the people that we can talk to, then what does that say about your work? So, anyway, 
and also to to answer uh, the question about Discord, like what's the value of Discord? Yeah, it looks like it could be overwhelming, right? Like Discord has like a lot of stuff, and people put like gifts. <laughs> you got it, dude. But it's a support system. You know, you go in there, you you ask some questions, you you get you submit some work. There's some challenges. There's a study group. Um, there's people in the general chat where they hang out and just talk to each other while they're working and practicing. It's just a really good place to be, you know, and just to train. Um, I also have added a feature thing and I just, I need to get back to this actually. Um, yeah, I think from here, I need to go back through here and grab all this stuff. Um, but I, I share students works whenever they feature them. And that's a good way to get your work seen as well. So my advice is to use it often because it's, um, it's a great way to make friends. A lot of people have made really good friends with one another on the Discord. And uh, I like that. Hey, AJ, I have a question. Go for it. So um, um, I was wondering what I could do to, in regards to social media, what I could do to start building up a, uh, a follower base because I feel like by the time I get to that level of skill where I can um, already start working, it'll be a little harder to get noticed. So I wanted to do as much as I can now to um, be recognized easily in the what, future. What, why do you think it's gonna be harder in the future? Elaborate, I'm not, I'm not following. Because I feel like building up a follower base is something that happens over, over time. Yes. Um, okay. And, and so why, why would it be harder in the future? I'm trying to figure that, out, that part out. Um, just because you're not really noticed at all. Nobody knows who you are. If, all right, say, say I just start posting all my, all my, like when I get to that level of skill and I start posting everything up, uh -huh. it'll be harder to get noticed like that at, as opposed to if I were doing it, like if I started now, if you get what I mean. Um, nothing, I don't think anything, uh, at least I, as I can foresee, would change. It would be the same, right? Like if you don't post now and you post later, the only difference is that you posted later and maybe you're better now, right? Like, well, um, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out why would it be more challenging in the future to get more recognition? Versus because, because if you were to do it earlier, people could see your gradual build. They could start knowing who you are at an earlier stage. Sure. As opposed to when you just come off like out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you're, it's, you're it's true. Out there already is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's true for both cir circumstances. Nobody knows you right now for the same reason why nobody would know you in the future. And so, so it, it's a really, it's a really simple, simple answer to your question. People don't know you if you don't share your work. It doesn't matter whether you're really, really good. It doesn't matter if you're really, really bad. I mean, there, there are differences, and I'll talk about those just in a moment, and obvious differences. But the reality is you should just post often regardless of your skill set. Like, I have really good friends who are amazing, and nobody knows anything about their work because they don't share it. That has nothing to do with their skill. It has everything to do, like, they're separate. Do you understand? Like, sharing your work consistently and constantly is different than uh, being coming a good artist. Okay. Um, okay. What kind of work would you recommend that we post? So, so this, this goes back to kind of, you got to solve the first problem. Okay. All right, Eric, like the first problem is don't worry about the nuances. Okay. It's, it's like, it's like a, it's the equivalent to be focusing on the shoes of an athlete to be as good as that athlete, right? It's the same thing. Like, don't focus on that just yet, okay? Because those nuances do matter eventually, right? But the first and most valuable thing that must be handled is are you posting consistently, right? And I mean consistently like every every other day every day even do you understand that yeah 
So let's take a look at someone like PewDiePie. You know PewDiePie? Mm -hmm. So he's like the number one YouTuber, right? Uh, he has the most YouTube subscribers in the world. Yeah. yeah, I was actually reading about like how much he's worth. It's crazy. Yeah, and so it's easy to say, well, like that guy got lucky. Like, how dare he, like, complain about anything? He's he just plays video games and talk. Does he's like an asshole <laughs> for a living, right? Mm -hmm. But the reality is that uh, he hustled. He he would do a video every three to four hours. It seemed like when he first started, he was posting two to three times in one day you understand mm -hmm. consistently for years okay you can just go back you don't have to take my word for it just go look at how many videos that guy has made he's made thousands of videos okay potentially tens of thousands he's got a lot and that's the magic ticket okay is consistent yeah. yeah right because what you're doing is that you're constantly f increasing people's opportunity to, to find out who you are in the first place right okay and so then and then once you get in the habit of just posting often and sharing often then the, the next step is to focus on the kind of content that you got right because if if you are if you're in the camp of thinking of like what well, what is the best strategy and am i doing it right then then you will get discouraged really often because once you try, let's say a different approach and it doesn't work, then you're like, well, I guess it doesn't work. I'm going to stop sharing my work. Do you see like the, 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 the fundamental, mm -hmm. uh, so, the fundamental problem of that? Because you're, you're misguided. You think that if you try one thing, it's going to make you go viral. That works for like a very rare amount of people. Okay. So you don't want to work. You don't want to build a strategy around something that's like a lottery ticket. You want to build a strategy around sustainability, right? Right. And so, so sustainability, oh, sorry, I keep interrupting. Let me, let me finish this thought and I'll let you finish yours. Okay. Um, sustainability means just get in the habit of posting often in general. That's it, right? Yeah. And then once you do that, then you can start trying to challenge things. You can say, well, what if I try a little bit different? Do you see how now you can have more objective data, right? Mm -hmm. Because you already post often, but now you try something different. Remember how I was talking about if you switch too many variables, then it's really hard to determine what actually works. Yeah. Right? So if you don't even have that one consistent variable, that control, you know, then whenever you do try something different, you'll be, you'll, you'll, you'll have the wrong assumption. Right? Because perhaps it is a really popular thing, but it just happened to be on a Sunday morning or nobody's online. It's just it's like a, not a good time. But if you don't know that, like you don't post often, you don't post on Sundays at that time, whatever, then how are you, how are you going to have any constructive data that's going to help you? Um, other than supposed to be painting, like 10 minute painting, but I've been talking to you. Um, do, does that all make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so go ahead and say what you're going to say now. Yeah. So the thing is like with Instagram, for example, right, I'm not really, um, opposed to posting like some of my rough drafts like i'll post the thumbs that i worked on or some face studies that i've done or like the, you know what i mean things like that i'm okay with but i feel like an art station it's a different story i am feel reluctant to to post any of that work um i feel like that's like a portfolio kind of website that you know you can only post your finished work on like the most the best of the best work that you've done yeah then you'll never post on there right so, so then think of it differently. Say, I'm just going to post on there all the time. And eventually I'll just delete some of the bad ones because you can't do that. <laughs> right. And so then, so your thinking is that people are going to remember how bad you were. <laughs> Nobody does that. I can't imagine like a hiring manager is like, I'm going to make sure that we, we never hire people who started off bad. <laughs> Nobody thinks this way. <laughs> okay. And nobody goes out of the way to, to, to slander you because you're trying to get good. That's not a reasonable and rational behavior, right? And so don't be afraid of that. That's just you. Like, of course, people are going to criticize you and, 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 and say something about your work that is not favorable, right? But that's all temporary, right? Eventually, you're going to be good, you know? And, and usually what the, the actually best 
the um, the most rational the most rational thing that will probably happen. Okay, mm-hmm. with all that, the most rational thing that might happen is actually that people will um, just not do anything. They won't engage. Do you understand me? They won't like your image. They won't follow you. They'll just skip past you. Like you're just like another like average or nobody artist to them. Okay. Until you do that one image at that you submitted at the, the right time that you caught that one person. Do you understand? Yeah. So it, it's, a, it's a, it's a, it's a numbers game. Like if you post often and consistently, then you get more and more people to follow your work. So for instance, whenever, uh, like right now, I have a gradual tick of sales of my mentorship, right? But guess when my mentorship starts to really uptick in, te- in terms of sales? When, what, when do you think that happens? Um, during the summer? No, like what do you think that I do that I know uh, that almost works every time? Uh, I don't know. Basically talk. So when I stream and I answer people's questions, people are like, whoa, this guy like educated me. I see. What else does this person do? Whoa, he's got tutorials. Man, this tutorial was super educational. What, he's got a mentorship? I'm gonna do that. Do you see? Mm -hmm. So I haven't streamed in a long time. So that reflects the the slow pacing of my sales and my mentorship. I see, I see. Do you understand? But if I stream every day, almost every other day, I get a sale on my class. It's almost clockwork because I'm exposing myself. I am a fairly good educator. People do learn something and they do like my classes, right? And all I got to do is put myself out there. Do you understand that? Mm-hmm. Whenever I do workshops, I sell like two to three seats in my mentorships almost every single time. Right. When I go to uh, events like local events, again, I sell one or two seats. When I do streams, one or two seats. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and that's all, all I do. Like, it's not like people are waiting around, like twiddling their thumbs and like are viciously searching for uh, my content. A, a lot of the, like, like I can tell you guys right now, like a lot of my mentorship seats are sold by a few factors. One word of mouth, right? Some of you guys have just heard from other people that my classes were, were great, right? right? And then you looked into it and then you said, yeah, I think I want to do this, you know, and take my class and hopefully you guys enjoy it. I think most times people do. I think I've only had one real critical complaint about my course. And I took it very seriously and I actually made some changes based off of that criticism, right? It, it was only one, but most criticism was generally um, was positive, right? And so then, um, so that's one step, right? One step is people will just hear about it, right? The next step is someone saw a, a stream or a tutorial and then they follow the breadcrumbs from there, right? Mm-hmm. And then the, the third one, which is the less likely one, but it still does work, is someone just sees a painting of mine somehow, somewhere, right? On either ArtStation, DeviantArt, um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever, right? And then they they follow the breadcrumbs that way. Does this all make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. So 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 for instance, yeah, being active. So for instance, um, you can see something happening right now. So, um, I I posted ten minute drawings, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I did this right and say hey where's yours and so i'm engaging people in a different way and i think there is this one too so this one got to 311 this one gets 285 this one only got 71 nobody cares about that high (laughs) this is the first one 397 this one's just older right these 10 minute ones are actually getting some some large traffic and i'm just going to keep doing them and i'm going to encourage people to do it too right I'm engaging with people and I'm trying to be creative about it, right? And there's gonna be a larger lesson said about these 10 minute paintings, okay? That the basically everybody has at least 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 
and I'm going to say that after like, I have like a hundred of them, you know, <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to talk about, them. and people are going to be like, wow, that's profound. Well, he has tutorials, he has mentorships, he's got a club. Great. Let me join them. You know? Gotcha. And, and what's great about my business strategy is it's honest. I don't have to do anything. To, I don't, I, I could just be myself and it works. Right. So I like it. That's why I appreciate it. That's why I encourage people to do what they like, share what they like, you know? So that way you, you're never really selling out. You're just doing more of what you do. You're just now being a little more strategic. That's all. Right. And it's not like I had like this crazy business strategy in mind when I started doing it either. It wasn't like, that's kind of the thing I want you to recognize too, Eric. Right. It wasn't like I just sat in, a, in my room. It was like, I need to find a way to expand my network. You know? It just happened because that's just, yeah, I was just doing it. And then I just paid attention. You know, you, you obviously know I'm pretty observant. And I just like, was like, oh, okay, this is probably what was going on. And I just tested it and I was like, oh, sure, sure enough, this is exactly what's happening. And once you have a more of a, a, a stronger understanding of what's going on, then you can control it. You can manipulate it, right? And some people do it maliciously. There's malicious ways to control people. Uh, intent and I, I I'm proud to say I've not done that right there's really malicious ways to get people's attention and retention right like for instance like you know a lot of the social medias do this they they know how to get you through clickbaity like titles right yeah. and and they know that you're you're going to click it and they know that if they do certain array like titles that say can't, she like she can't believe that she lost this special part of her body in 10 days. And then there's like a picture of like this woman's face. It's like super missed, like what the fuck? Like her face is like that, you know? Yeah. And there's like a blurred image of what might be missing. It looks like maybe it's her arm, right? And you're just like, what is it? And then you click on it and it's just like a mole. It's like nothing, it's like, it's <laughs> right? Yeah, okay. But you're like, does she like decapitate herself or does she like, what's going on? You know, that's like, that's malicious. Like they do that intentionally to get your attention in a, in a very cheap way, right? And they know most people can't not, like they cannot fight that urge. Like I can't even, I like to believe that I'm pretty good at being distraction free, but that's not true. Um, even I get distracted. And so like, for instance, I think there was one where it's like 10 celebrities who died on set. That was like one I saw recently. And there's like a picture of um, Charlie Theron like like nose diving into like a wall look like or the floor and i was like what she's not dead though and i was about to click on it i was like so close <laughs> and i was like oh no don't do it you know but that's like it, it works man they just they know man. they get into your psychology and that's right. kind of the point i'm trying to make right like you don't have to do that you can just build your art and audience earnestly you know build them honestly and earnestly and you'll you'll collect them so for instance, like I, I've been doing like those political posts, right? And I, I had some friends say to me, like, you know, you should be careful because um, you might you might lose your reputation or people might be over, overly critical of your opinions, right? And I say to them, like, that's fine, you know? Everyone's entitled, awesome. yeah, everyone's entitled to, to hate on me if they like, it's fine, you know? Um, uh, what ends up happening is the opposite of what people would expect. I actually get more followers. And it's, it's an exponential thing. But again, I don't just go out of my way just now go blatantly just find a political post to talk about. I only talk about the ones that make sense to me and the ones that I'm passionate about, right? So for instance, there's like stuff going on with North Korea, right? And everyone's flipping out, like World War III, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I, I'm, I'm Korean and I lived in South Korea and Yelam could probably speak to this if she's still here and awake. Um, North Korea is just like the best way to describe North Korea is just a bunch of they're 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 just a bunch of uh, cowards that just say a bunch of stuff and never really do anything. So even if he has the capabilities to nuke anywhere now, right, including South Korea, which would be terrible, um, they're not crazy. They just are probably running out of resources. And sure enough, that's what happened. I think because of the sanctions that Trump signed, um, they are going to be cut off of some resources based off of the sanctions. So they do what they do best. They're like, yo, we're going to nuke then. We're going to nuke Guam. You know, if you don't, hey, if you don't like listen to us, man, 
we, we're going to do it, you know? And in, in the past, presidents usually are like, hey, don't do it. We'll send you some resources, which I actually disagree with. Like, they should have a better, stronger strategy. And ironically, Trump is, is kind of as crazy as he is with his tweets, <laughs> which I, do, I actually think he's not being, he's being Trump. He's not being diplomatic at all, right? Um, it, it is kind of interesting to see that he's not given in, right? Even though it may cause uh, a nuclear holocaust for North Korea and South Korea. But I don't talk about that stuff because it's, uh, I, I don't know, I don't really feel strongly about it. Like, I don't obviously don't want there to be a nuclear holocaust, but I don't, I'm not overreacting, right? There's other things going on that really do affect me and affect people around me that uh, are a little bit more on my mind. So I just post those types of stuff, right? I let other people, you know, overreact if they want to. I'll start to react properly when I actually see some real retaliation. But North Korea historically has never really done anything crazy. I think one time they um, they hit, hit like this Japanese fisherman boat, you know? Yeah. And um, that's like it. They're just a bunch of shit talkers. Uh, hold on just a second. My daughter didn't close the door. Hold on. But see, uh, I stick to my, I stick to my, uh, I stick to what I think, you know, and, and because of that, I, I've got gathered followers on both sides, right? Uh, I think, like for instance, this late, latest post was a little bit more conservative leaning, right? And and people were flipping out, as as you expected, and unfortunately, disappointingly, some people flipped out way too hard, right? Uh, and a lot of people were messaging me. And some of them were like, kind of like, were, were surprised I even had these types of people follow me, right? And I was just like saying to them, I was like, well, why can't they? Why can't, like my artwork is not conservative, liberal, yellow, purple, green. <laughs> it's just my artwork. Yeah, a person who, who loves Trump can still like my artwork, <laughs> you know? I was like, what, what makes you think that I only have like one demographic? In fact, I'm actually happy that I have such a diverse group of people that like my work, right? Um, in fact, I, I would argue for days with one of my fans, like days, I would argue with him viscerally because he was such a huge Trump supporter, right? And uh, now we're like, we're, we're even closer as, as, a, a, as I actually became friends through all that argument, you know? I think that's important to talk the things out, not to just... Um, Blatant, like just blatantly just call people idiots and stuff right and so i think that's valuable and so i'm actually very proud that i have a lot of different groups that follow me and appreciate my work you know even if i disagree with them that's fine there's nothing wrong with that and so that's what i'm saying I'm, i don't i'm not in true jeopardy i still sell my tutorials i still sell my classes you know because i've always been myself uh, i mean if i went out of my way and did something truly uh, egregious then maybe i will probably lose a lot of that right like if i went out of my way to say something along the lines of like you know i think black people are an inferior species <laughs> i think maybe maybe i would lose a lot of people there but i don't believe that obviously so i'll never say something crazy as that you know right. so I'm, I'm i'm not afraid of kind of my political stances i remember some people were even um telling me that artists shouldn't stay shouldn't be political and i was like what the and I think that's when I went haywire with my political posts. And I, I, went, I started adding that like tag at the end. I was like, oh yeah, by the way, here's some art, <laughs> right? And I think people enjoyed that, they liked that. Um, and so that's kind of like the moral of the story I'm trying to pitch to you is just post constantly, be yourself, you know? Um, be reasonable too. Don't just be yourself if you happen to be an asshole. Like don't be too much of an asshole, <laughs> okay? Because that's hard to sustain. All right. And, uh, but like, if you have point of views that you'd like to share and stuff, it, it is, it is wise to think it through, but it's also, you know, safe to try to be the person you want to be. I think that's important. And so, and so then you build, yeah, you build a, an audience around that. And that's really valuable. At least in my opinion, it is. All right. Yeah. Uh, I think Yelling wanted to ask you a question. I feel bad because it's four o'clock in the morning over there for oh so. yeah go ahead yell him yep 
Fire uh, and fury. Are you afraid of Are you afraid of uh, North Korea bombing you guys in Seoul? Uh, uh, I do, but we, you know, we just live in normal <laughs> day <laughs> life. Even these crazy news. Yeah. I know. I, I, so peaceful. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like my mom and yeah. dad live out there, so it's yeah. I, it's definitely in my interest that nothing terrible happens. Specifically, you know, in in Seoul, because I know, like, I have mm. family there, and I know you. Your, your dad is still here. Yeah, my dad and my mom are there. Yeah, mm. my mom is Korean, and then my dad is black. So, mm-hmm. yeah. All right, so go ahead, ask your question. And then... Yeah, here's my question. Uh, is there a good time to apply in studio in case of Korea one or two months after annual salary negotiation? There are many job postings for a while or considering a visa things, so. Uh, I don't know, that's actually a good question. <laughs> Like you wait, you're saying that in Korea there's like some sort of annual push for hiring or something like that in Korea? Uh actually it's not a push, but after uh annually we do salary negotiation and someone doesn't like the studio so or they leave. Company. Yeah. The and then the company that, needs to yeah. hire a replacement. I see what's going on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's nothing like that, like uh, officially in the states, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Right, where they're just like, all right, time to negotiate contract. <laughs> I, I think that's like in the states, nobody, they don't do that unless you ask. It, it doesn't. Yeah, you have to ask, otherwise they'll just leave you at your pay potentially for years. Yeah, I, I like what you just said. That sounds dope. Um, yeah, they don't do that here in the states. Um, in fact specifically in our industry uh, there's a mm. there's a saying of like if you want to raise quit uh, right because if you quit then you can ask for more money somewhere else or the studio will have to find a way to pay you what you wanted all right which is like not ideal uh, well, why should i have to quit for you to recognize my worth all right um so i think that's a really cool thing what you just said in, about korea um, but there is like a ramp up usually and me, like I said, there's nothing official, but there is usually like probably a ramp up during, um, the end or the, the beginning of a project. Like mm-hmm. if the release of a project, well, let's mm-hmm. say like, um, Blizzard releases this new game, mm-hmm. um, then th- there's a few things like they might need a lot more staff especially mm-hmm. if the game does well. So then you can look into probably working for that studio because they're looking now. Uh, or at the end of a, a project, like like the like the project got released um, like years ago and it's starting to, you know, lose some steam. So then the studio might be working on their next IP relatively soon. Um, so for a, g- a good example, like, you, you know, Valve has not been working on a game for, for years. And so they've been working on this card game that everyone hates. (laughs) Everyone everyone was not excited about that. I think it's because there's a Pixar effect that happened with that. For those of you who aren't sure what I'm talking about, um, Mm -hmm. Valve announced a new game and they were like making a big deal out of it. They had like a conference and everything and people were like, you know, spend lots of money to go to this conference to see the new Mm -hmm. game. But, you know, Valve has games like Half-Life 3 that could happen or Portal 3. Mm-hmm. You know, a new version of Counter Strike, maybe, or Team Fortress, or Dota changes. You know, there's all this stuff, and then mm-hmm. they made like a they made like a card game from the Dota universe. So they basically are trying to like compete against Hearthstone, and and people are very clearly aware that that's more for money reasons. Like they know that they're doing that because they want to make more money, mm-hmm. not to appease their fans. And I think that's why people flipped out. But you know. Applying the valve would have been something to do for years because you know um, there would have been constantly in flux of making their project, right? So like right around the releases and the in, you know, or announcements of games is usually when people will start to companies will start to hire, but it's not like a rule of thumb or anything. You know, it's not like official. It's not like a, an annual season thing like yours. <laughs> it's yeah. just more like you can you can kind of put 
uh, two and two together. Mm. Yeah. So think so. Beside of that, so thinking about the visa things, uh, I don't. I uh, as I know, when applying H one B the work visa at March or February, mm -hmm. and the lizard claim comes out October. So if if there are gap between February to October thing, yeah. So February uh, and October. Something like that. There are between four about four or five months gap. Couldn't work properly. Just applying the visa and company and employee, and they waiting for the for work permit and when October the research comes out they accept when they accept it they can work our October work starting October as I know before that that's not not legal thing I think I think so yeah so I see so do you know that kind of situation from your friends, not a U.S. state citizen, or uh, how to dealing with the studio, the studio, how to dealing with that kind of problem. The I want to hire that people, but the legal things. So there are uh, gap between the yeah. I don't, but I can ask. So, yeah. <laughs> I can just make a Facebook post about it. I'll ask people who have moved to the States and how they got their work visas in the different time zones. And I can see about mm -hmm. Korean. Cecil, he's Korean and he's officially worked here for his whole life. I wonder what he did. I can ask him and I can mm -hmm. probably ask my other friends too who are also Korean. Um, um, I don't know if I understood exactly um, what, what she said, but um, <laughs> in uh, Canada, Mm -hmm. um, if there's a job posting, um, they um, they cannot hire anybody from outside Canada um, unless um, they can prove that they cannot find um, somebody as good in Canada. So, um, um, so which means that uh, if they post a job, uh, it, they might have to wait like a, a three or four month before they can hire somebody from outside mm -hmm. because they legally have to wait and find somebody who's Canadian, mm -hmm. which, I, which I believe is, is very common from, in, from most um, North American or, or European country. Um, but like pretty much everybody that, that, I, that works in, in Montreal or Toronto, mm -hmm. like everybody is from outside Canada. It's not like there's a lot of competition. So I don't think it's it's that hard to find a visa in the United States. I think it's very different, but in Canada, it's it's just I think there's just a delay of a few months. So, so my my question is: so the studio, the company waiting waiting for three or four months, are they? Uh, so from what I heard, he said, yeah, yeah. they'll wait. They'll wait for you if they think you're good enough. Mm. Right. Even even a junior artist like a short time of experience like me. Yeah, you know, when it comes to that, I can talk to mm. that point more than I can talk to maybe the visa stuff because I've never had to deal mm. with that. Mm. Um, and I don't want to pretend. I don't want to give you misinformation. So you're just gonna have to keep looking your, yourself. You're gonna have mm. to find that information. Mm. I can try to help. Mm. I'll see if I can get some answers. Mm. Um, but. But basically, um, the better you are, mm. the more likely you're going to get um, uh, great opportunities. Yeah. Okay. And, and it doesn't necessarily mean experience. Like experience, I think, is a great way for, for companies to weed out the weak. Okay. Meaning that like if you have no artwork or no drawings, whatever, um, hopefully you won't apply at all, right? Because you'll just assume that you have no experience, right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, but someone like you can totally apply, even if you don't have five years of experience, you're really good. Uh, you just need to just get your work in front of these people. And, and the whole idea is that experience is just to make up for like, if that person actually is a value, that's all. It's all that the experience thing is just a good test of, does this person have value? Right. Mm -hmm. But if you can do exactly what they're looking for and some like, and better, then mm -hmm. they'll, they'll bring you in. I've seen it happen time and time and time again. I've seen people hired straight out of school doing like senior position jobs. So it's not like they're looking only for senior position jobs or, or employees. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, but it does help. Um, like uh, when I got hired uh, at Sony, I was a junior level, but uh, mm -hmm. I didn't have any experience before. I didn't have mm -hmm. five years of experience. I was just good enough. And then I worked on, you know, the project and then I became better and better. And I became a senior level and they made me start working on bigger and better projects, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the, the point I want to make, try to make to you is yeah. like figure out that visa stuff because that's legal mm -hmm. stuff that we can't mm -hmm. fudge around with. But, yeah. but at the same time, you just need to get your work out there. And I've already told you I was going to help you with that. You just need to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah, that's so good news. Yeah, like I, I, I don't, I can't promise anything, but your work is yeah, good yeah. enough that I feel confident enough to show to some really good and important people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the worst case scenario is that you don't get a job, but they'll give you some valuable feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they'll they'll mm -hmm. tell you why and what they. Well, I'll, I'll ask them deliberately, like to give me real reasons why they don't, they don't want to hire you. And, mm -hmm. and some, uh, in my opinion, some of them could just be because um, they just don't have the resources right now to do it. Like they already are full, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. they, or they just don't have the money to potentially mm -hmm. help you with your visa and stuff. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, is a real, thanks. real problem for someone mm -hmm. like you. Not so much like me. I can just go in there, right? Walk in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that, man. It sucks, but like that's just how it is. So we got to work with what we got. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, hey, Anthony, I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Uh, so this is going to be a bit deep, but... Um, yeah, go for it. I'll, like, I have social anxiety, and um, uh, back to the communication and uh, social media stuff. So basically, well, where do I start? Um, I got into art school, I got a scholarship because uh, before art school I was, uh, I finished like a really good high school for math, physics and chemistry and when I got in everyone was saying like I got there because I had money but that's not true. So I was really bullied during um, Man, people art are, school, yeah. People yeah, are mean yeah. dude. Even, even by professors and what? when I, yeah, uh, because um, like I get nervous even talking about this. Um, uh, so basically, I wanted, I learned to draw by myself everything. And um, when I got in, we had like this painting and drawing classes, and I wanted to draw realistically for first, so that I can stylize later and you know experiments or whatever. But my teacher was like, um, do abstract stuff right away. And I mean, I don't have a problem with that if it kept, happens once or twice, you know, but not the whole year. Mm -hmm. So when I was doing like realistic stuff, he was always like, put me down and say that uh, um, it's like, you don't have a um, signature with realistic, doing realistic portraits and stuff. And I was just saying, I just want to learn. I'm, you know, nothing else. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he failed me and, uh, that's uh, that was a major subject and when someone fails you uh, with a major subject you have to repeat the whole year okay what happened next you can't change and yeah and then i was again bullied and um by the same professor uh and you can't switch professors so you you're stuck with that one person and um uh like that was really I don't know, detrimental for me, closing up in like, and after my family situation that I told you about and everything. 
and also wait hold um, on just a second hold on mm -hmm. sorry it's okay Sorry, my kids came in here and I was like wondering why they're in time okay. No <laughs> worries. So I used to be like really social friendly, you know, and everything. And after that, when I was talking to people about art, you know, just, for example, in our country, asking guys who are artists something, they would take it the wrong way, you know? And wait, even, wait, say the last part again. Uh, when I was trying to ask someone who's who was a better artist than me, and uh, I, I'm not saying this is just uh, exclusively happening to females, you know, but it happened to me a lot of times that uh, when I ask something, they take it the wrong way and think that I'm interested, you know. And, oh, I see. Uh, yeah. So, what I'm leading up to the main question is how to deal with uh, social anxiety and trying to, you know, promote myself on social media when I'm really nervous about that stuff and after I, I mean how do i not um uh, come like a you know like a stuck up bitch that's what people have been saying about me when i you know sure yeah so okay so so let's 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 do uh, sorry just another thing you uh, i'm saying this because you totally got that part uh, like the perfectionist because I've been playing the piano for 12, 12 years, doing math and stuff and everything by myself. And then when I think yeah. like everyone else is um, judging me, I, I feel really bad and about myself and my art. And I think that sure. has been, you know, weighing me down. Yeah, it has been. So, so let's talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so let, let's, let's deconstruct a few things. Yeah. And then help you understand why people are jerks. Okay. Um, so people are jerks when they are uh, insecure. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, um, I, I've met a lot of people in my life and I've ran into a lot of people and um, the, the overwhelming amount of evidence that I've gathered, at least in my own life, is that when someone has a weakness in with themselves, they generally project onto others so that nobody can focus in on them. Okay, so what might have happened with your teacher is that you were probably drawing better than your teacher. Like, I don't know if you've seen your teacher's work and you can make a comment on that. Uh, but, if I, yeah. but if I had a, if I had a guess, I don't know your teacher, but the base, based off of how he reacted to you, he probably wasn't a good artist. You know, and I mean that objectively. I don't mean that like spiritually. Fuck that noise. You know, I mean like literally, he wasn't any better than you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and because he wasn't better than you, he had to find a way to justify why he was your teacher. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Yeah. And that's not good teaching. Mm -hmm. See, it, 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 it's the teacher's job to make the students better than the teacher. Like there's a great saying is from Leonardo da Vinci, I believe he says, poor is the pupil who does not surpass their master. Basically, I feel bad for the student who doesn't get better than their teacher. It's, that's how it works. You're supposed to stand on the shoulders of your teachers, not live in their shadows. And historically speaking, like if you look at all of the great artists and the relationship to their mentors, there's a, actually a lot of different cases where you would see the student becoming, ex accelerate their skill, and then all of a sudden the teacher starts becoming resentful of their student and starts to actually defame them. This actually happens quite often if you look back in history. Right, and that's because of just insecurities. Like people want to justify that they're worth. See, I am, I am one of the least insecure people that I know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm also I'm also highly arrogant and confident. Right. But also yeah. super humble. It's like a weird combination of things. And this is why I think I get so good so fast. Because on one end, I'm like, dude, all my work is so good. I did such a good job. I'm so fast. And then someone will say, not really. And then they'll tell me why. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Okay, I'll fix that. I'll work on that. You know? Yeah, yeah same <laughs> because, thing. Because in, in some instances, people will, will, will be super confident. And then when you tell them what's wrong with their work, they'll like denounce it. They'll denounce everything you have to say. Uh, and then vice versa, there's people who are super humble. They're too humble. Where when someone gives them overly critical advice, then they, they take it too harshly. Right? And almost to the point where they stop working. Right? 
So I feel like I had a, I have a good balance of both. And I think it's not because I was born with this. I think throughout my life, I, all the experiences I had kind of built me to be this person. Okay. Yeah. Like I learned that, um, that obviously like when people say nobody's perfect, I genuinely believe that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I practice that in myself. And that's why, you know, people were like, uh, when I started to code and people were shocked, like how's AJ learning how to code so fast? Because I'm, I'm, I'm aware that I'm a terrible coder. I'm not like, well, because I'm a master painter and I teach people all around the world and I educate and influence thousands and thousands of students and artists and, and help them achieve their dreams, doesn't make me a good coder. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Th those are two different things that I have to start over. Like I, ha I know that as a fact. And because I do that, I can basically uh, allow myself to be weak and suck and be embarrassed, right? Uh, it makes me better. And eventually 10 years from now, I'm going to be a master coder. I'm pretty confident about that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, so, so getting back to you though, right? Like, so these people like so, so focusing on your teacher. Yeah. He was definitely, um, he, he was misguided himself. So you weren't going to ever get really good guidance from him. Yeah. You just weren't. And, and so, and so, so now let's think about like, think about your, your classmates, the same thing. You were probably better than them like objectively, not subjectively. I'm saying like you were generally better. You, you were probably a better draftsman. You're better creatively. You just, you just mop the floors with them. Well, you so know what's, sorry to interrupt you. The problem is that uh, I'm not better. I'm just like you. I'm trying hard and trying hard to learn. And See, I don't know, I so, learned so, so that's the difference. It's because uh, between you and I potentially is that mm -hmm. people did do the same thing to me, but I just didn't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, I didn't too, you know, but it's like, no, it, it, it affected you. You just got to admit that because if it yeah, didn't, it did. if it didn't, then you, we wouldn't have this conversation. That's okay? true. So you just got to admit that. And then we can talk about why and how you should really and truly not give a fuck. Okay. And I'll teach you how to do that. Okay. Yeah. That's why I asked you. <laughs> okay. Um, so first you have to understand why people are doing this in the first place, because if you don't understand that then, and then it's harder to, to, to kind of not care. Right. And I'm trying to tell you, like, especially if there is, um, situations like uh we'll, we'll get to the one where like you're trying to talk to artists that you did respect and that you felt were better than you but then they came at you at a completely different angle that you did not um condone right uh, or didn't appreciate so we'll talk about that in just a second but before, before we get to that one let's talk about like the just the people who were critical of you because of your work they're, they're just jealous that's that's what jealousy looks like wait hold on just a second i need to yell at my kids Delilah, julian sit back don't touch the curtain you guys are in timeout Delilah, more, more, there, here you go, you too, Julian, okay, um, I don't know what they did, but, you know, family, mom and, <laughs> mom and dad got to be on the same page, <laughs> consistency, um, and so, so you, do you see kind of where I'm going with this, it's like, it, it, we can chop it up to just jealousy, you know, and, and once you recognize that, it's kind of like seeing the matrix of people's personalities, right, and then you can start to you can start to be a little bit more empathetic, right? Like not hostile, but empathetic. Say, look, these people are are aggressively being mean to me, right? Like, and or at least I perceive that, or maybe I'm overthinking this. So I want to give them a chance. Maybe I, uh, maybe maybe I accidentally attacked their ego. I didn't I have any idea. I wasn't that was not my intention, but it happened regardless. And now they're reacting. And when you attack people's ego, as you probably will suspect, people get emotional. People get over, they overreact. Everybody does, including myself, you know? So once you can recognize that, then you, you can approach it in a few different ways. Like one way is to, you know, to compliment them frequently, right? Mm -hmm. to, to, to recognize that you're on their side. You want to be a team player and that you say, look, your work is good. And there is things that I like about your stuff. And I would like for, us to have a conversation about that and you'll find that that works pretty well in I cases. Did that a lot of times okay um, so so if you do that that works really well in most cases it just does but occasionally and probably in your case probably more often which is unlucky you'll you'll encounter people that just generally will not care they just they are just so insecure and then they just cannot get past it okay yeah. So then you, you just got to cut them off. You got to just move, remove yourself from the, the, those environments. That's I did. It. Actually, that's, I had like, you know, a lot of friends on Facebook. I had an Instagram account and then 
after I cracked, I deleted half of my friends list and I deleted my Instagram and everything. And yeah. So, so, so you, so you talking, over, so you over, I was defensive, yeah. I was yeah. So you, you got to remember how I said, when you get emotional, you over, overstep, right? So yeah. you're not wrong to suspect that people wronged you. That's, that is fair. Okay. But you over corrected. Does it make sense? Yeah. Because you got to also know that there's just people out there that aren't like that. Like, I'm not like that. I would never treat you that way. Right. Everyone in this class, I'm positive wouldn't treat you that way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. So, so obviously it was an over, overreaction. Right. So, so what I'm trying to say to you is that you might have got unlucky. You might have been surrounded by a, a perpetual amount of people that are just really bad. Okay. That can happen too. Okay. So, so here's how you get past that kind of thinking is say, okay, instead of kind of writing off everything that way, and, and I'm not going to even say that I'm like uh, on a higher horse that I've never done that. Right. I actually, this is my, my Facebook that I have right now is my second Facebook. So <laughs> I'm talking from experience. I'm not just saying this as like some sort of like trying to give you some sort of like indirect advice. Like, no, I understand. I've been there. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to tell you that that wasn't productive. Okay. What, what I did instead is that I realized instead of saying to myself, everybody's a jerk off and no one, no one respects me and no one's treating me the way I, I deserve, uh, a better way of thinking about it is that it's really hard to come by good people. And I should make more of an effort to find good people instead of kicking out bad people. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cause that, cause in that framework, you're on the prowl to find good and reasonable and sensible people versus constantly just shutting doors on people. Does that make sense? Yes. And when you do that, then it's, it's a more positive outlook about your shitty situation, <laughs> okay? You, you just happen to be, like, you have to understand that, you know, most people will be in the situation too. There's a lot of people that are in the same situation and they found ways out. And I think one of the ways that they may have done it is the way that I'm suggesting, you know? Yeah. And, and I actually follow that philosophy indirectly, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think I learned it young. When I was a kid, I had a, uh, had a girl that I was dating for like eight months. And while I was dating her, I basically neglected all my best friends and close friends just to mm -hmm. be with her. Cause you know, I was infatuated with her. And then after, you know, we broke up cause it was bound to happen. It was like my first real relationship. Um, I was heartbroken and it sucked. You know, I was a teenager, you know, I was all hormonal and and then my friends, all my friends, the ones that I abandoned for like eight months were like relieved and like right there to pick me up. And I remember when that happened, like still to this day, because that, that to me was a very valuable moment. I learned that my friends hold a lot of value to me, you know? And, uh, and then I changed kind of my perspective on that. And so I never did I did that again. Never did I get so infatuated that I stopped hanging out with my friends, you know? Yeah, that's true. Cause I learned, I learned and I didn't, I had to learn the hard way, but I learned. And, but I, I that became true just with friends and, and just people in general. So I have like, for instance, I have lots of acquaintances in the industry. I know like countless amounts of great artists. Right. Um, but there's only a handful that I talk to often, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That like when I f met them for the first time, I knew that this is a, this is a gem of a person. All right. And I gotta, I gotta do, I gotta go out of my way for this friendship to be more than just us acquaint, being acquaintances. Cause I feel like this person is going to bring a lot of value to my life. Okay. Right. And, uh, uh, there's, there's this view, like, for instance, I think, uh, one artist I will name, uh, Jama, Jama, uh, I can't, I can, yeah, I can't say his last name, but Jama, <laughs> me and we're really close. We're good buds. Uh, when I was going through some drama with, with my career and stuff, he was one of the many people that like got my back 1000% you awesome. know and he he even told me that there's some circumstances that he went through that was really traumatic too but he got through it and he understood he and he empathized and and one of the reasons why he said he was super supportive of me is because he said that the amount of stuff that I do for the community you know was was overwhelming and he didn't understand why people were so uh, aggressive against me right yeah. he said look like I understand you made a mistake but you're you're not I, I know that you're not doing things maliciously you know yeah, yeah. and him and many others that i i, I, I there's a few people that came out of the woodworks that were that did that for me but there was other people that i thought were great and were were my friends actually do the opposite you know so yeah. don't get me wrong 
It happens, even to the best of us, right? Uh, and it will never stop happening. So don't even expect that you'll be immune to this, okay? It will always happen throughout your whole career. This is how it works, okay? Yeah, well, I think it's getting a bit better because, you know, I would never take a mentorship like eight months, months ago when it was like the worst yeah. case. Uh, and uh, That's good. Now I'm taking a mentorship training and, you know. And surrounding yourself with better people. Yeah. Okay. So, so think of it, like, hopefully that makes sense to you. Instead of finding ways to keep people out, like, you should still do that. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> You're going to still meet people that are just, like, complete jerk-offs. Just shut the doors on them. That's fine, right? But be on the pursuit of great people because they do exist and they do, they're going to help you. They're going to help you accelerate, okay? Um, um, and so once you change your framework to that, then, you know, life does get a little bit easier, okay? And, and then on top of that, the 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 thing about like you know it seems to me that you said that so you would you would appreciate uh artists who are good and specifically this is a male female dynamic right yeah and so then the the these male artists would then kind of take that as a oh well i see yeah. i see what's going on here you know and then you're like no that's not at all i'm just just trying to say your work is good god damn it oh. and 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 let me just say that's going to happen too right and, and it's, again, it's just because, you know, uh, that's just how the world is, right? It's unfortunate, but it's just how it is. So what do you do in those circumstances? It, and I think you probably already know this, but just to make sure that it's compounded for any of the other female artists or even male artists, right? This can happen to yeah, yeah. male artists as well. Um, always stay professional. I had a friend who um, this, this female artist was basically doing, like she was complimenting his work. She was going on and on about how much she loved his work and all that stuff. And he was just like, cool, you know, right? And then she was, he was talking about like he, what he was working on. And then she's like, I'll do anything to, to check out your, your latest works, anything, right? And he was just like, what the, how do I respond to this, right? Oh, so he's a single dude and she's a single lady, right? So he felt, oh, this is kind of like, you know, she's flirting with me, right? And, and, and the way that she was coming on him, it sounded like it was like when I mean, he told me, I was like, that does sound like it. But he's like, you know, but I wanted to make sure. So then I um, asked her deliberately, you know, like, okay. is this a thing? Like, are you, are we like, you know, if not, like, I, I will retract my statement, you know? Mm -hmm. And she's like, I don't know, is it? And it's just kind of like, okay, <laughs> you know? And so he <laughs> went with it, right? And then, and then it blew out of hand because what ended up happening, she's like, oh, I can't believe you thought this was what this was, you know? Oh, God. Yeah. And then she went online and tried to slander him, like literally that slander him. You guys might have actually heard of this story. I don't want to give names, but, but tried to slander him, went out of her way and all this stuff. And so then um, people were in her defense. They're like, I can't believe it. Like this guy's a fraud and all this stuff. And it was like real devastating. And, you know, um, he told me about it. And, uh, and I was like, that does suck, dude. And so then when he went in to, to, to talk to her about it, he said, like, what the heck, you know? He's like, I thought, like, this was the kind of conversation. He's like, don't make me share our whole conversation because the only part of the conversation you shared was the part where it makes me look terrible, right? Yeah. And she's like, go ahead and do it. I don't care. And he's like, all right. So he got, like, a lawyer, and he got all that stuff, and he did. He posted it. And then all of a sudden, people who were in her defense – read that part and they're like wait like is this what the comp like before the conference like this is in full context because now people are like wait a minute like this this is kind of like it, you were egging him on you know and so it, that's really dangerous guys okay and so that's what i'm trying to say at all times be always professional if if for whatever reason there is some sort of flirtatious agreement like both parties agree that there's something going down you know um, I would say that's better suited in person so you can see people's faces <laughs> and see their body language and like have a longer dialogue than like maybe one or one or two occasions, you know, or online. So that's my advice on that, but you're never going to avoid it. You know, pe people just don't know how to read correctly, you know, and sometimes. Yeah. Because uh, I had a problem, like I'm, I never, you know, I, I'm always, I'm in a long-term relationship right now and I don't flirt with anyone anytime. I'm friendly to people, but not overly friendly. 
-hmm. And um, it happened to me when I, you know, when I'm not cold and distant, but I don't use smileys and stickers with people I don't know. Yeah, that sucks. And yeah, smiley and stickies are awesome. Yeah, <laughs> they are, and and you know, if I use them, it's oh yeah. So, Oh, and then I, if I don't, I'm a stuck a bitch and I'm cold and I don't know if that can be, you know, like if, if it could close doors. Yeah. For people who want no, something. It won't close doors. It won't close doors. If you like, if, if you literally are a, 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 like a mean person to somebody out of nowhere, then that, that will. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you don't use smileys, that won't. <laughs> okay. It, you'll be fine. Uh, like if someone writes to me and they don't put smileys i'm like what the hell <laughs> I, I don't i don't think that way any reasonable and rational person doesn't think that way and if they did you don't want to work with them anyway just because they are like the art director for a major game studio um doesn't give you the uh, doesn't give them the right to treat you like an asshole right yeah um, that's why i always say treat everyone equally put everyone on an equal level plane because then like if you treat uh, art directors the same as you would treat your classmates, right? Yeah. Then, then you're consistent. That means that if your classmates treat you like dicks, then you shut them down. And if uh, your art directors treat you like dicks, you shut them down. You understand? It doesn't matter their status. Because if your art director treats you like trash, but your classmates treat you amazingly, guess what? Your classmates will one day become art directors. You understand? Yeah. And that's a better relationship to have because you were friends before. And they are, want to work with you because, not because you're just good, but because you're friends. People want to work with their friends, you know? And you want to build relationships that way instead of just like trying to make it in the industry. There was this, oh man, there was this terrible incident at IFCC, uh, not last year, or not this year, but last year, mm -hmm. where this girl was like being like literally molested. And, oh, and is, she didn't react, she didn't do anything because she didn't want because the person who was molesting her was like this bigger name artist and she didn't want to kind of get that and she she approached like people and uh, um and she told me i was like yeah nobody does that that guy's just a creep <laughs> you know and you know people confronted him right That's and sad. so he left her alone after the whole event and so so don't think that this is like it, this, this is like that's like genuine sexism right and um and misogyny and it's not tolerated i don't think anyone tolerates it so don't don't ever let anyone get away with that ever seriously and i say that both to men and female okay because uh, females can do it too so for instance the when i was talking about that post that i feel disappointed right is that the, some of my friends were saying were insulting the people who are kind of like agreeing with my argument not that this guy is right and that women should be treated completely different the whole, the whole desertion that I was trying to have was that I don't agree that Google fired him because of his opinions, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't agree with them. I don't agree. But firing him is just too executive. There's better ways, right? Um, like have him suspended. Have like a console with him in front of female coworkers and see how they react and have him experiencing that. Yeah. He's not going to have that now. Now he's he's – He's vindicated, you know, the opposite happened. And so anyway, let's not get into that. The point I'm trying to get at is that um, there are some female, um, like people who are responding and insulting the male based off of their gender. There's a, you will never understand because you're a man. And I'm like, once you start with that argument, you have to understand that of course, on principle, we don't understand because we've never lived our lives as, as females. But to assume that we don't care about females because we're men is also equally as bad, right? Yeah. Like I, I have, a, I, I'm married to a woman. I have a daughter. Like obviously, I care about women's uh, opportunities in the industry. Like I have female students that are increasing, increasing, increasing. In fact, m weeks ago, I even commented on how awesome that is, right? Yeah. Obviously, I'm in the camp that we should be more more diverse and there should be equal footing for everyone but equal footing for everyone, you know? Yeah. I uh, and there's a, there's a standard against men that is never addressed as much is that men have to be men. They have to be, uh, you know, they have to work all the time. They have to be the head of the household. That's, oh, a, a, yeah. that's an unrealistic, yeah, that's an unrealistic standard for men as well, you know? That's why, like, yeah. whenever me and my, my wife hang out with our friends, 
my my friends will say to my wife, it's like, oh, it's really nice that your husband helps out around the house because I work from home and stuff. Mm -hmm. And she said to them, he doesn't help out around the house. He's just being a good parent and husband. Yeah. Like this, he's just doing his part of the deal and I'm doing mine. You know, we're partners. It's not that I'm supposed to do all of these, like cleaning the dishes and cooking. It's like, that's a woman's responsibility. No, it's both of our responsibilities to cook and clean, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that's my wife saying that to her friends and they're like, oh snap, it's mind blown, right? And that's where we stand. It's about equality, not about who's better or who's worse. And so I was disappointed when I saw some, where they were using their gender against the other gender. It's not ideal. That's not a strong argument. Not, no, in, my opinion. not in my opinion. And so, so, so with that all being said, you should understand, don't tolerate any of that bullshit. You're never, they're always aren't going to be shit on you. And if they are, let me know. I'll fuck them up. And so, <laughs> no, seriously, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big name man, and I, and I can, make, I can make some mountains move. If you have a strong case that there's some genuine evil happening, I will do something about it. Don't worry about that. But, okay. but, but to think that this is okay is not. I think the artistic industry in general, I think most people in their industry don't think this way. They just don't. There are, there are always yeah, going to be some bad apples. I remember, so keep that in mind. And this is, like I said, to everybody in this class, I want you guys to all understand this, okay? In my experience, I haven't seen a lot of it. I have seen it, but I haven't seen a lot of it. So that's what makes me suspect that. Um, and I have, you know, um, friends who are females who work in industry and they tell me that there's these certain circumstances that happen. That's why I always encourage my female um, uh, artists, because I know this is the world we live in, to try to submit their work before their faces, because sometimes people do react biasly. It's unfortunate, but it happens, right? Yeah, yeah. But if you put your work front, front and center, and then they see your work and they're like, oh, this person's dope, and then they find out you're a female, uh, it's a better circumstance than sometimes they just think, oh, this is an attractive young lady. I want to bring him in. Because the, the industry as it, as, as it is now is mostly male. It just is. And I don't think it's based off sexist ideals. I think it's societal ones. Like, for instance, my daughter, when I go shopping and the girl section, it's like brooms and kitchen sets. Mm -hmm. Right. And my, the boy section is like cars and like video games. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I think uh, that's the problem. It's not so much that like the game industry is in itself sexist. I think it's just that um, games in general were mostly made for boys and boys make games, you know? And so that's changing though. That's changing. There's more and more females that want to be in the game industry. There's more and more female uh, people who are making video games. And that's what, that's ideal. And it's going to level out soon enough. And uh, so I would say you're, you're definitely going into a world that's going better unless, you know, for whatever reason Trump does initiate a nuclear war, then we all have different things to worry about than, you know, getting a job in concept art. <laughs> but till, <laughs> but till then, but till then, you know, I would say be confident, you know, post your work. Don't be afraid of being yourself, you know, start putting smileys again. <laughs> okay. Like ring, like don't let someone else fucking control what you can and cannot do, especially if you're not doing anything malicious. Okay. Like if you were saying like, I can't believe like I go around punching people in the face and they don't like it, <laughs> then I would be like, you know, maybe you should stop punching people in the face. But your <laughs> smiling is just completely innocent. There's nothing wrong. Like that's them, not you. Okay. Yeah. And so, and if you were afraid that you were going to have tarnishing, uh, tarnishing reputation to your career, uh, you know me, you're, you support what I do. So I support what you do. So don't, you have a, you have a strong player on your side. Okay. Thanks. And so hopefully that will be your confidence and just baby steps, baby steps yeah, back yeah. into it now yeah? until you feel fully confident again. And remember the things that might affect you um, again are, are not because of you. It's because of people's insecurities usually. Okay. Yeah. And if you recognize that, then you, you, you can live a little bit, you can sleep better at night. All right. So hopefully that helps you out. I'm going to have to end it out there because it's already it does. Uh, Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you a lot. Yeah, it was a very important, it was a very important question. I wanted to make a very important statement. Okay. Yeah. And so, so I, I believe everybody in here agrees, you know, I don't think anyone here disagrees. So don't be afraid, you know, to, to network with people outside of your country and your social group, make friends, find friends, you know, yeah. uh, make, make friends with great people. Uh, and you'll, you'll see your uh, your career blossom. Again, you can't avoid shitheads. That's just going to happen.
Yeah. Um, but overall, I appreciate you. You do good I work. Appreciate your comments a lot. Thank you. Yeah, you do. I feel a little easier. Yeah, great. Yeah, um, I mean, you're also a Serbian bastard. So I, <laughs> let it be clear that I am racist. I may not be sexist, but I do. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not racist either. I hate all races equally. That makes me not racist. <laughs> uh, yeah, just kidding. All right. Well, you guys, you guys have a good weekend. I'm going to go. Um, again, thanks again for st sticking in here for so long. It was a good class. You guys submitted great work, great questions. There will be more, more opportunity for Q&A in the next class. So if you felt like there was more a question that you wanted to ask, feel free to ask it either through the Discord or wait till the next class. Uh, with that being said, guys, peace out. Have a great one. And Thank you. see you guys soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.